Well, there's no doubt that uh, wherever you are in Tampa Bay, you're going to get some impact from yep. this. The question is just how bad is it going to be where you live? 10 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskin has been tracking it all. He's here with more. And I think Mike is going to be a little bit pleasantly surprised, but less than I think Helene, but pretty close to it. The, the bottom line is it looks like it wants to go in down to the south. So then you have more offshore winds up in the Pasco County in that Hudson area. Okay, but before it gets here, it's pushing water. And all of that water is going to push up along the coast. And then where the center goes in is really what's going to get most of it. So here's the track right now. You can see it will weaken a little bit. But this forecast is actually for a little bit more wind than what we had initially thought. 30, 130 mile per hour winds tomorrow night just off our coast. That's about 100, 150 miles or so. And then you can see somewhere in this area here would be landfall at about 130 mile per hour winds and then it moves off. Now, here's the storm now and you can see the eye is looking really healthy at this point. 915 is the pressure, but it's moving quicker now. It's to the northeast at 12 and it is following right along that forecast so far from the hurricane center. That line. You can see it comes northeast and then it starts to curve a little bit into Sarasota. This will change, but I'm showing you this because this was up here and that was really bad for Tampa. Now it's down here. It's really bad for central and southern Sarasota, Siesta Key, Pasco up, Mike up in Hudson right there. That's a lot better. When we had Helene, Helene went like this and it was throwing water for everybody all the way up the coast. It's not quite the situation now because we have a landfalling storm to the south. You'll get more surge to the north. You'll get less. So there's that line. There's the winds wrapping around. You can see where it pushes more water in and you're going to get some water blowing out on the north side of that exactly where we just don't know. So I can show you the forecast line now, but that's going to change. That's what we do know. This also has changed eight to 12 foot surge for the Fort Myers area. That is a lot of water for them. All right, now this has changed too. 9 to 13 for Tampa Bay and Pinellas County. That was 10 to 15, but we saw 5 to 8 for Helene. All right, so let's hope that number comes down. This number probably won't. 10 to 15, that's basically Siesta Key all the way down through Venice and through Vamo. Uh, and then you get up into the Pasco County. We're now at 5 to 8. Just north of there, you get up to Wikiwachi and northward, we're at two to four. So you see much less surge. I mean, look, we had most of our highest surge up for Crystal River during Helene. That's not going to be the case. Timing of the wind. Here we go. This is two o'clock tomorrow. Starting to see those tropical storm force winds move in. So it's in the afternoon. By uh, six, seven, eight o'clock, we've got 55, 60 mile per hour winds. Hurricane force winds coming on shore. Manatee, Sarasota, Southern Pinellas. 10, 11, 12 tomorrow night, Wednesday night into the Thursday morning. And then watch this swath from Tampa down through almost DeSoto County, all of Polk County by 6 in the morning on Thursday, and then over to the East Coast. This is 11 a.m. Thursday. Things really quieting down 2 p.m. on Thursday afternoon. So this swath right in here will see the most wind. We have not seen a storm here for a long time with those numbers. 110 mile per hour winds are possible. That's where you're going to get most of your power outages. That's where you're going to have most of your problems. And last but not least, and this is going to be a big deal. We haven't talked a whole lot about it. That area right there, Tampa northward will get a ton of rain and you're going to get it in a short amount of time and you're going to get it over several hours. Heavy rainfall, right? That's going to cause some flash flooding. And for more on that, let's bring in meteorologist Colleen Campbell. Colleen? Thanks. So, yeah, so the excessive rainfall outlook, it's really important you pay attention to the areas that are north of the center of that storm. 8 to 12 inches, possibly even 18 inches in some localized area highlighted in the fuchsia color here. Those are areas that you have to watch those small local waterways for potential flooding. That is the highest risk that you see highlighted there and moving upward from that 6 inches to 10 inches for areas around the Big Bend uh, for the Nature Coast and extending into the Big Bend. So this will also be a big rainfall event for some folks. We already have some flood warnings that are starting to spring up like places like uh, the Peace River, Althea. So those little waterways that are prone to flooding anyway, when we have all of that excess rain that we will be getting in the next 24 and 48 hours, those are, are the waterways that you need to watch by your home, even if you're in uh, those inland locations, especially because you may say, okay, well, I uh, evacuated from the surge, but are you thinking about those local creeks, streams, little lakes uh, behind your house that are per, uh, prone to flooding. 
on a normal day. As we look at local impacts across our area, again, starting northward, that flash flood threat, very important there. We just went over the rainfall totals that we're expecting. Of course, that surge threat, don't mix the two up, the flooding and the surge. They're separate here. We're talking flooding with just rainfall alone, but we do have that surge threat and the flood threat in Pinellas and Hillsborough County. And then moving down into Manatee in Sarasota County, about the same where we're looking at the flood threat and the surge threat. So again, surge for coastal, but flooding for those inland locations as you head out to Lakewood Ranch and Parish and Duet. Those are areas that you have to consider. What is the nearest source of water and is it going to uh, cause an issue on those uh, roadways. As we look at those inland locations, another thing to consider, we have power outages likely across the peninsula, but especially where those winds, that wind field that Bobby just showed you, uh, where we have those hurricane force winds, definitely going to be some power outages and you have to prepare for potentially not having power for a few days.